particle systems. Uh, particle systems are cool. Particle sub operator, not so cool. Particles GPU from the palette, way better, but I want something simple that I can modify easily. By the way, how do particle systems work? Uh, so, the basic setup looks like this. We have a particle and we have some sort of force. Could be anything, you know, gravity, wind, force. The force affects the acceleration of the particle, then acceleration affects velocity, and then velocity affects the particle position. That's about it, actually. At least if you're computing it frame by frame. If you are doing a pretty complex particle simulation that has to be physically correct and you do all sorts of extraordinary collisions and stuff, then good luck with that. But I'm a small guy and I just want to get myself a simple particle simulation that I can play with. I'm not even going to compute acceleration because I live in an imaginary world without friction where forces affect velocity immediately. We gonna make some particles. Uh, let's deal with the rendering network first. Add an add sub, enable add points, append it with a convert sub, choose convert particles per point, add a geometry comp, add a camera, a constant mat, and apply it to the gel. Finally, add a rendering top so that we could see. Here is our particle, the, the first one. Now, we need a buffer to store the initial position somewhere. So add a constant top, set the color to black, because I want these three values to be zeros. Add a feedback top, it's gonna hold the current position of particles. Add a keyboard and chop, we're gonna use it to reset the feedback. Add a GLSL multi-top, change the GLSL version to 4.3. Select the compute shaders mode, sorry all the Mac users. Hide this that and show another one instead. Connect it, add a render, select, drag the GLSL top here, select the zero index, let's change the naming. This will be pose in it, this one will be pose and this one is gonna be pose out. Now go to the text editor. Let's call our main variable pose, we're gonna use it for positions. Remove this line. So what we are doing here is we are fetching a pixel value, storing it in a variable and writing it back to the output. Is that exciting? Select these three operators, duplicate them, rename them to be val init, val and val out for velocity. Connect the feedback. Now, go to GLSL multi-parameters and increase the number of color buffers to 2. Also, go to the val out and select the second buffer with index 1. It went transparent and that's because we are not outputting anything to that buffer yet. Let's fix it. Duplicate this line, let's call the variable val. Also, duplicate the output line, change the index to 1 and don't forget to output val. Now, let's deal with forces. For now, let's go with simple noise stop. Disable monochrome and bring down the period to zero. Go to the initial position. Let's set the output resolution to 100 by 100. Now, copy parameter and paste it as a reference to the velocity and the noise stop. Select the initial position, velocity and noise and set them to 32-bit float so that we could deal with negative values. Connect the noise into the GLSL top and go into the editor once again. We need to sample the force now. Duplicate the input line, rename the variable to F and set it to sample from the third input. Now, we need a float called step which equals 1 divided by 60 because our FPS is 60 frames per second. And here comes the magic, the, the boring magic part. In each frame we're gonna update our values. First of all we're gonna update velocity with the force, so val plus equals f multiplied by step. Now we can update the position, so pose plus equals val multiplied by step. See what happens? It goes to infinity. Now, let's enable instancing and use pose out as a translate operator. Set channels to R, G and B. 
Now when we reset the feedback, the particles fly away. <laughs> Let's quickly fix the offset by changing the offset on our noise top to zero. For the next bit, we need to connect our initial position into GLSL. Let's add another variable called life, which is gonna be the alpha channel of the pose vector because we are not using it anyway. And now in each frame, we're gonna subtract the step from that life value. And we're gonna output it to the alpha channel of the first output. Now we can check and if the alpha goes below zero, we're gonna reset pose to the initial position. So let's sample it. Call it any underscore pose. Duplicate the input line. Select the fourth input. So if life is less than zero, pose equals to the any pose and life equals to the any pose dot a. So now we've got this explosion that goes faster and faster every time. That's because I forgot to reset the velocity. So you want your velocity to equal back four of zeros right here. Now this bit is consistent, but it still resets everything at once. Let's randomize it a bit. Hit the right mouse button here and insert a reorder top. We also need another noise top. Connect the initial position to the first input just to get the resolution right. Connect the noise to the second input of the reorder top. Now, go to noise parameters and set the alpha output to input multiplied by noise. Now you can set any alpha to the initial position and that will act as a lifespan. But we need to change the alpha channel to the second input. And as soon as we'll do that, it's gonna be randomized. So now you can set the lifespan to something crazy like 100, but let's keep it at 2 for just for now. We can also play with the period of the forest noise stop. The larger the period, the less random the movement becomes. We can also set the noise to the 4D simplex noise and animate the fourth dimension with apps time.seconds. Another thing that I wanted to show you is like, if you go here and add a line sub instead of particles and make it shorter, you can go to the second instancing page and use our velocity as a rotate to operator. Yeah, the, the line should be oriented to the Z axis. Let's make it even shorter. Now we can add a second feedback to the rendering. Use a composite top with over operation. Reduce the opacity on every frame just a bit. And we've got ourselves a funny little firecracker. Does it look like a firecracker? Anyway, you can also use a ramp for the color and comp it over a black background. And that's it! I hope you've liked this little tutorial, I'm gonna make more videos about particles and GLSL, so stay tuned. If you want to get this project file and support this channel, you can check out my Patreon. That's it for now, I'll see you in the next one.